So we're back at the site where we performed a herbicide trial on the Revolvia. And it's about 100 days after treatment application. And if you'll recall, we had three different herbicide treatments. We had Habitat with the active ingredient Amazapir, Garlon, which was the active ingredient Triclopyr, and Roundup, which was the active ingredient uh, Glyphosate. And for each of these treatments, they all told a different story. And we used a foliar application and also a frill cut application on larger specimens. So what we'd like to do now is go to each of the treatments and, and see what kind of story they're telling us. Okay, so we're in the Garlon treatment area. Uh, that was a foliar application to this lower mid-range canopy. And what we're noticing is that we do show symptoms of of the triclopyr working where we have necrotic apical tips. We're seeing twisting of some of the uh, leaves. But overall, what, what we're noticing so far is that uh, we do not have a lethal dose administered to the Revolfia. So early signs 100 days later suggest that Garlon is not working as a foliar application to the Revolfia. But Dave, I noticed you're looking at something over here. What are you noticing with this application? Uh, yes, in contrast to the effect on the Revolfia uh, by the Garlon, which was not terribly effective, uh, the Garlon seems to have had a very strong effect on the common guava, which is right in front of my foot here. It looks like we have a pretty good kill. Right. So, it all, so we have uh, actually selectivity, except that they're both weeds in this case. Another thing to point out, too, is you'll notice up front here, where the application extended out, uh, the grass has survived. So again, accentuating triclopyr as a selective herbicide against broadleaves. Um, so a real effective uh, herbicide in pasture management, I guess in this case for controlling guava, but maybe not for the Rovolfia. Now we're in the habitat plot where the active ingredient is amazapyr. And again, it's 100 days after application, and what we're noticing is the classic symptoms associated with a mazapir injury, where we have necrotic apical tips on the plant, and also necrotic lesions on mature, fully expanded leaves, and some pretty intensive chlorosis, suggesting that even at 100 days, this herbicide may actually still be active. Hmm. So we're st we still have a story to tell here. Um, also with the guava, similar uh, symptoms associated with imazapyr injury, suggesting that it may also be effective on this particular weed species here. But Rick, you're noticing something else within this treatment plot too. Uh, yes, can you sir. help describe what we're seeing here? Yes, sir. Well, I, you know, I noticed with this compound, it kills the grass. Right. And this is a ranch. Yes. So we've got to start thinking about that. Right, and so that's, that's a negative quality where mazapyr, being a broad spectrum herbicide, we also understand or know very well that mazapyr tends to be very uh, effective on grasses. Awesome. Uh, so in this case, even though we may have good activity on the Revolfia and potentially on the guava as well, uh, it's a, a negative quality to not have that selectivity where we can save the grass, similar to what we saw in the garland. Yeah, we don't need a bare dirt here. So now we're in the Roundup plot where the active ingredient is glyphosate and what we're showing here is really effective control of the Rovolfia showing high sensitivity to this particular herbicide more so than the guava. So in this case we found this particular active ingredient glyphosate to be head and shoulders above the other two treatments in this experiment. Uh, some of the negative qualities, however, though, are that, again, less effective on the guava, but that's secondary to really what our main object objective is, which is to identify how we can control Revolfia. Uh, the other one is that as an, a broad-spectrum herbicide, we do see grass suppression and dieback with this treatment application. So Rick, you'll remember as part of the experiment, we also treated these same herbicides as a frill cut application on some of these larger specimens. And it appears that uh, in looking at the treatments, the herbicides are telling a similar story as what they told with this foliar application. Dave, could you shake the uh, Garlon application tree? What we're noticing back here is the Garlon treatment was less effective, where the canopy remains intact and the tree is still alive. But if we look at the Amazapyr treatment, Dave, you could shake that for us. Similar to the foliar application, we're seeing a thinner canopy, uh, more chlorotic. Also, it has necrotic lesions on it, uh, and we suspect that that herbicide is actually still active. 
But again, the head and shoulders winner in this in this treatment experiment. Dave, you could shake the uh, glyphosate treatment for us. Notice the the Roundup application has completely defoliated the canopy of this larger specimen here, showing once again that Roundup appears to have a real uh, effective dose on the Revolfia. That's a dead tree. That's dead. Now what we're noticing with some of this Revolfia that's died back is that there's something getting in to the center of it later on and eating the center completely out of it. This core right here is now mostly uh, insect frass that's left in here. This kind of stuff right here. All from some kind of a worm that gets in here. It appears to be after the plant has been degraded. Right here we can see the entry uh, spot for the larvae that gets in and eats the core out of this Revolfia, out of this compromised Revolfia. Well, what we're noticing too with Revolfia is it has a pretty interesting anatomy uh, in response to the herbicide applications. Again, be, with these systemic herbicides we've used, a lot of the necrosis initiates at the apical portions. But it also has an interesting morphology where it's able to compartmentalize and these segments of the branches and then you'll see where the uh, new growth can regenerate if we did not get a, a lethal dose administered. So uh, an interesting observation that we'll have to follow up on as in response to this herbicide application.